Hi guys, Dr. Giddy's here. In today's class, we're going to study specific speed. Do you know specific speed is the scientific way of specifying turbo machines? For any water turbine, specific speed is written as this, where this is the revolution per second of the shaft. This is the shaft power output in watt and this one is the net heat available at the inlet to the nozzle in meter. One should note that all these are in SI unit system. If you do dimension analysis, you will find that this specific speed has no unit that is it is dimensionless. That's why this specific speed is also known as dimensionless specific speed. So the expression for dimensionless specific speed is this, where this one is density of the fluid. In case of water turbine, it is simply the density of water. And this one is the acceleration due to gravity. In the working range of hydraulic turbine, these two are almost constant. That's why we can eliminate these two and can write this. Where this is the RPM of the shaft, not RPS. And this is the shaft power output in kilowatt, not in watt. And this is the net heat available at the inlet to the nozzle. Mathematically, it is equal to gross head minus head loss, where gross head is head rest level minus tail rest level. Since head loss is mainly because of the friction, so you can take it as frictional head loss. Now, if you do dimension analysis of this equation, you will find that this term has some dimension. That's why this term is known as dimension specific speed or simply just specific speed. By observing this equation, now we can define a specific speed of water turbine is a speed of geometrically similar turbine which produces unit power working under unit head where this unit power is unit shaft power. And this unit head is net unit head available at the inlet to the nozzle. So what is its physical significance? As I earlier said, it is the scientific way of specifying water turbines. It's still not clear, huh? Let me explain you by an example. Suppose we have a dam and we have a water reservoir over here. And this is the pipe which is connected to the nozzle. And here we have turbine. Then water in the reservoir will flow from here, converting its potential energy into kinetic energy. When high velocity jet strikes the turbine blade, the blade starts rotating. And from Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, we convert mechanical energy into electrical energy. So this entire setup is nothing but the a typical hydroelectric power plant. Being an engineer, if we are wondering whether this turbine is efficient or not, if it is efficient, can we install even more efficient turbine over here? To get the answer of this question, we have to install different types of water turbine over here at different different configurations which is practically infeasible. That's why we do model analysis of geometrically similar turbine in wind tunnel. So if we want to find our answers by using model analysis, our sufficient variables would be net positive heat available, rotational speed of the shaft, net shaft power output, if we combine these three terms into a single term, we will get a specific speed, which is this. So after doing model analysis of different types of water turbines at different conditions, it is found that 
for pelt and wheel turbine with single jet initially efficiency of the turbine increases with the specific speed then after at certain value of specific speed it starts decreasing with specific speed and in between specific speed of 10 to 30 its efficiency is almost maximum and for pelt and wheel turbine with multi jet we get same nature of the graph and here when a specific speed is between 30 to 60 efficiency is almost maximum for francis turbine the nature of graph is again same and here when a specific speed is between 60 to 250 its efficiency is almost maximum and for kaplan turbine when a specific speed is between 250 to 900 its efficiency is almost maximum now come to our initial concern if we want to install the most efficient turbine over here then first we will find what is the net head available what would be the rotational speed of the shaft and how much output power is required then we will find the value of specific speed and for maximum efficiency if a specific speed comes out 10 to 30 we will install pelt and wheel turbine with single jet if a specific speed comes out 30 to 60 we will install pelt and wheel turbine with multi jet if a specific speed comes out 60 to 250 we will install francis turbine and if a specific speed comes out 250 to 900 we will install kaplan turbine let's solve a numerical for even more better understanding at a hydroelectric power plant site available head and mass flow rate are 24.5 meter and 10.1 meter cube per second respectively if the turbine is to be installed is required to run at 4 revolution per second with an overall efficiency of 90 percent this suitable type of turbine for this site is so water given available head which is 24.5 meter discharge which is 10.1 meter cube per second rps which is 4 so from here we can get rpm is 240 and overall efficiency is 90 percent and suitable type of turbine to be chosen for this site so being an engineer we will recommend the most efficient turbine for this we first find the value of specific speed for these given parameters we know that expression for a specific speed is this and this is given this is given this is not given so we have to find the net heat available at the side let this one is equation one from our common sense we know that overall efficiency is net shaft power output upon total power input where this net shaft power output is nothing but the p used in the expression of specific speed and the total power input is nothing but h net into weight flow rate why because head is nothing but energy per unit weight so if we multiply h net into weight flow rate it will give total power input and weight flow rate is nothing but density into discharge into acceleration due to gravity by using these values into the expression of overall efficiency we get this and by putting given values into this equation we will get net short power output required is this much kilowatt so on putting this value into equation 1 we will get a specific speed which is coming out 250.6 since it is not dimensionless and its dimension is quite complicated that's why we simply write asi unit instead of its unit since a specific speed is in between 60 to 250 
so being an engineer we will recommend francis turbine for the side i think now you know what is the specific speed and what is its physical significance if you still have any doubt regarding this you can ask me into the comment section and in case if you are wondering what is the expression for specific speed of the pump then it is this where this is the rpm of the pump impeller and this is the discharge in meter cube per second and this is the head in meter so by observing this formula we can define a specific speed of a pump is the speed of geometrically similar pump which delivers unit discharge over unit head and in case if you are getting confused over the power of s for pump and for turbine then i have a simple trick for this just draw a triangle and write 3 4 5 in this way then from here you get h to the power 3 by 4 for pump and from here you get h to the power 5 by 4 for turbine that's it for this class guys if you found my this video useful chances are my these videos are useful too so check out this video and to subscribe my channel just click on this and do not forget to click the bell icon thank you for watching this video till end i really appreciate